Welcome back to On Shape Orientation. Today we're going to be talking about the linear pattern and the circular pattern. Uh, if we take a look at this PDF, we will be using this grate to do our linear pattern practice. And we will be using this gear sprocket deal to be trying our circular pattern practice. Uh, if we go back to our grate, you will see basically we need to draw a rectangle that is 10 by 20 with a half inch offset uh, with 13 one inch squares copied vertically uh, and six one inch squares copied uh, horizontally or wide with a spacing of 1.6 side to side and 1.5 top to bottom. So uh, go ahead and go back to on shape. Uh, like always, we're gonna start in a sketch by pressing shift S on our top plane and to normalize P to hide those planes. I'm going to start with a corner rectangle based off of my origin. That is 10 wide by 20 tall. Again, uh, if these measurements get in your way, just go ahead and drag them out of the way. Do not delete them. I have a lot of my students that try to do that, and they end up making more problems for themselves later. Next step we're going to do is an offset. So select everything. Offset on the inside. It's already selected there. Uh, go ahead and say OK, but instead of the two point or the 0.25 default, we want it to be a 0.5 because that's what the drawing calls for. Um, next, we're going to go to a corner rectangle. I'm going to draw a rectangle from this bottom left of our offset. It's going to go one inch over and one inch up. And to kind of declutter, like I said, we'll slide these guys out of the way. And now this is where we start our pattern. So I drew three rectangles, and then in a couple more clicks, we will have this whole grate as we need. So I'm going to start with this linear pattern. And the way it works is you need to select everything that you want to make a copy of. So I'm only going to select these four um, lines. I'm going to slide out to the side and slide up a little bit so you, we get a little more spacing. Um, right here, I need a spacing of 1.6. So just be att uh, pay attention. You could grab that and slide it from inside to inside, um, but the measurements I gave you on the drawing defaulted to how it, it kind of sets up. So I'm going to start with this being 1.5 from inside corner to inside corner of our next copied shape. And I need six copies wide. You will see I did the math. Kind of for you, uh, 1.6, not 1.5, there we go, to where it matches up and touches both sides. Um, on this one, we're going to go 1.5 up. And for that instance, I need 13 copies, but I'm going to show you what happens if I had 50 copies. You will see that it is going to keep going and going and going and going. And it will just keep going off into space. Now you're wondering why there's nothing here in this space. Um, Onshape does this thing where it is not going to render what isn't necessary. It's trying to trying to save some computer power. Uh, if you ever played any old like PS1 games, it kind of that's why fog existed in some of these things. It helps save the processing power. Um, but if I take this down to my 13 copies that we need vertically, you will see it does the same thing. Yes, it's going to fill those in after I click OK, but you'll notice that it stops in the extends that I want it to. So that is what I want. I'm going to make sure my mouse has that green check mark. I'm going to click OK, and you'll see it'll populate the rest of those in. Now uh, to check to make sure this thing's a actual thing, I'm going to let's say I was going to cut this out of metal. I'm going to extrude. We'll give it a quarter inch depth, so 0.25, and that's only picking the outside, so I need to make sure I pick my inside geometry as well. Let's say OK. And I have the grate that looks exactly the same as what we were looking for. So if you look on our drawing, you'll see, and I have the, the check yourself area. The total area of the finished sketch should be 122. If I click my top face down in the bottom, you'll see I have 122 square inches. So looking at this, you will see pretty much I only have to draw a few circles and some lines. Um, so for starters, we're gonna start with our construction geometry. You'll see I have a 10 inch circle in the middle that all of these uh, one and a half inch holes line up on. I have a line, construction line that goes up through the top. 
Um, it just goes off into space. It doesn't have a specific measurement of length. Uh, I need to draw some one and a half inch circles, a five inch circle at the center and a 20 inch circle on the outside. So pay attention to these tips and tricks that I've been throwing on. They're kind of help you get started. So if we switch back to on shape, start with the top shift S N for normal key to hide our planes. We're going to start with a center point circle, but we're going to press Q so it goes to a construction circle. And we're going to do that 10 inch diameter circle. While we're already in construction, let's start from that center point and just draw a line off into space. Escape out of those tools, do my center point circle again. However, this time now it's a solid circle. We're going to do a 20 inch circle. And in the center, we're going to do a five inch circle. From there, we're going to draw a line anywhere on this uh, center line here. And I'm going to make sure it touches my circle. And this is where I go in and give it a dimension. So I'm going to press the letter D from this mirror line that we made to my point on the outside. I need this to be 2.5. And from my top of my line to the circle this way i also need it to be 2.5 and you'll see that it shrunk down as i needed it to so next step would be to mirror it so i'm going to select this mirror line to fold this line over and now i could start my pattern however i'm going to add 10 teeth to this gear I want the tips of these gears to be rounded, a little less like a saw blade, more like a gear um, or a sprocket. If I did the circular pattern right now, it would copy it as is. So if I want to do a fillet on here first, I can click this point with a fillet. I'm going to give it a half inch radius. And now that point is rounded. So when I copy it, I don't have to then go back in and round it. Think back to our. Uh, are great. Imagine if I went in and had to go in and round every single corner of all of these rectangles and get pretty messy. So if I rounded it first before I did my pattern, it's going to make things a lot quicker. So same thing in here. Let's go ahead. Instead of picking linear, we're going to pick circular. I'm going to copy what I want. So I picked the two lines and my radius. And you'll see that I have this little 3x here. And what that 3x is, is how many instances of those geometry that you're copying do you want? So uh, according to our spec, it says we need 10 of those teeth. I'm going to change that from a 3 to a 10. And you'll see that it aligns accordingly. Now, if you look at this arrow, it automatically fills to a 360 um, all the way around the circle. However, if I wanted to change it, maybe I only wanted halfway. I wanted those teeth to only go there. Um, I could do that. But for what we want to do, we want this gear to go all the way around. I'm going to go and make it 10. And then I would select over here. The other thing you can do is if you see me grabbing this center, I can make it based off of different points. So maybe I had another point that I wanted to base it off of. That'd be a little funky to do it there. But maybe I had a point down here that it was actually supposed to be based off of. Um, you can move that around as well. So if that's something that you need to do based off of your geometry, you can do that. Once you figure out what you want, go ahead and click off to the side in space. And you will see we now have this sprocket shape. So do the same thing. Let's make this a um, 3D model. 0.25. And we should be good to go, other than the fact that we forgot to put those holes in the center. So let's go back to our sketch. And this is something I wanted to show too. Um, I have students do this a lot where they'll do something and they'll get really, really close. Um, and then they forgot one step. So this is how you can, it's not the end of the world. I can show you, you can go back in. So we forgot to draw our bolt holes. So now I can go here where these two intersect. I'm going to draw a circle. That needs to be 
and I will pattern that. So I'm going to click that circle, and however this one, instead of being 10, needs to be 7. I will say OK. We'll go back and you'll see that our geometry changes with that. So if we look, after we do that, we're going to need to check our area. So on this one, we'll click my face, and you'll see I have an area of 341.269 inches squared or square inches. Um, when I was doing this, I noticed that as I was moving some stuff around, so pay attention if you're if you're playing with this, trying to replicate it, this radius of 0.5 at some point changed to a 0.25. So um, be aware of that. Um, I don't know if I my fat fingers hit it or what, but it was giving me some wrong geometry. But just make sure that as you check there, uh, that all your specs are there. So when you go to find your area that it's going to match what I actually have. So uh, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, next week, we are going to be looking at the transform tool, which will allow you to move stuff and how to insert DXF or DWG files, which I don't really use DWG too often, but inserting images and tracing over those to make uh, some parts and some pretty cool top down design type uh, ways of thinking. So um, after that, looks like we're going to do dimension and I'm going to do a whole video on just how to dimension. And then, um, some people have been asking, when am I going to get to constraints? Uh, I plan on doing one whole video or even two because constraints are so important that they, I feel like they need their own video. I don't think it's going to work to do uh, a single video on one single constraint, but, um, we'll see how far we get with a couple of them. And if we can do them all in one, we will, if not. We'll go from there. Um, if there's any uh, additional projects you guys have in mind, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, the plan is to finish up the 2D sketch toolbar and then move on into uh, our 3D tools and do a similar fashion with the 3D features and maybe even jump into some of these custom features that you can, that aren't preloaded, but you can add in yourself. So uh, that's going to do it for me today. I uh, hope you guys are having fun um, and I will see you guys later.